I am Colonel Arman G. Mampusti, Philippine Air Force. I am here at the OJ-7 as head of the Civil Military Relations Division. Colonel David Fennell, Commanding Officer, 1st Civil Affairs Group, and Commander for the Combined Joint Civil Military Operation Task Force in partnership with Colonel Mampusti and J-7. With what you're planning, currently planning, I think you're going to improve how CIGIC Motive will be uh, executing and planning for other activities in as far as combined joint CMO task force will be for 40-25. I think uh, this morning's activity with our lecture with the Civil Relations Service of the Armed Forces of the Philippines will uh, is a great model, something that we can replicate. I think uh, there are still... There are still gaps in as far as understanding civil military operations in the U.S. context. Right. But definitely, I think uh, this avenue is something that we could explore so that we'll be uh, able to understand how each other's forces are actually operating. And right. that brings us to what you said a while ago, interoperability. And I hope that we can bring this forward later on. It's the effects. It's the effect that you have on the ground. Are we meeting our objectives and our common interests while doing this? Yes. I think that's very important as well. Because at the end of the day, it's us working together. To what effect in the population, to what effect in our interoperability, mm -hmm. to what effect in modernization, mm -hmm. and, and our ability to in, improve a, mm -hmm. a, a partnership and posture out here that is, mm -hmm. that is positive. Mm -hmm. Under the CGIC motive, we have five lines of effort that we're trying to execute to. Uh, a civil health engagement, mm -hmm a uh, civil military engagement, which is chaplain corps mm -hmm. and their outreach to the schools, um, which oftentimes are um, Catholic. Mm -hmm. And the third is our NCAP sites, mm -hmm. our engineering combined action mm -hmm. program, where they're building two clinics and two schools classroom, yeah. across Luzon and Palawan. Mm -hmm. And then we're doing some civil recon together. Mm -hmm. we're, we're looking at the infrastructure, seeing mm -hmm. what's available, and then, of course, relationship building. Yeah, yeah. And those are our five, and key leader engagement, those are our five lines mm -hmm. of effort um, mm -hmm. under the CGIC motive. Mm -hmm. And when we go out there to these sites and visit, I mean, they literally are shoulder to shoulder. Yeah, yeah, and I think the yeah, pictures yeah, reflect yeah. that, which yeah, is yeah. you will have an AFP uh, soldier or, or airman, mm -hmm. shoulder to shoulder with a U.S. soldier or airman or Marine, um, and they will... They, they will be sifting through gravel together, mm -hmm. they will be stuccoing mm -hmm. the walls yeah. together, they are working in the mm -hmm. heat, they are sweating together, they are mm -hmm. working together. Yeah. Um, it is really cool to see. More than anything else, I think uh, what we have right now at the Combined Joint Civil and Military Ta Task Force is that while consolidating everything, we get the lessons learned, we get the uh, gaps, we get the challenges, and um, more or less it informs how CIGIC Motive will be actually done in the future iterations of Balikatan. I think that's what's happening out there. I mean, mm -hmm. it truly is all goodness. I mean, yeah, yeah. the students are getting, and the teachers, mm -hmm. and the administrators are getting new schools, mm -hmm. new supplies, mm -hmm. and, and we've set modernized equipment, laptops, mm -hmm. yeah. flat screen yeah. TVs, printers, yeah. school supplies. Um, it is all a good event. And mm -hmm. then next door, they see real lasting. I mean, mm -hmm. these buildings are not going yeah. anywhere for yeah. decades. Yes, yes. I mean, the yeah. rhubarb and the yeah. concrete. Yes. Um, they will last for a mm. very long time. It's all civil military operations, yeah. which is overseen by experts in civil affairs. Yeah. Um, and it gets wider than that. Civil military operations can touch into agriculture, economy, security, mm. education. Yeah. Um, it's a very wide pool. And, and really what we focus on is what is most important to the commander and to the host nation. Mm -hmm. So that's how you decide what we're focusing on. Mm -hmm. um, the host nation helps us select the sites mm -hmm. the, through local partnerships mm -hmm. and um, inputs from a, local administrators and barangay. Mm -hmm. and, and so there's a very strong uh, national relationship with the local communities and leadership out there that is very good to see um, and that there is a, a back and forth and a, and a synergy that helps us determine what is most important mm -hmm. to the uh, national governance, AFP, all the way to uh, local leadership. Um, and so all of those actions that are taking place out there are part of civil military operations. And quite frankly, it can get even bigger than that. It can get as big or as narrow as the, the national governments and national military structure mm. want to make it. Yeah. The areas that we're in are actually proposed by the local government unit. And of course, uh, the oper 
the, operation, the operators on the ground. Um, we select these sites based on need. We select, we select this site because uh, the need is there. And of course, uh, the more people, the more the community will benefit more. So that's how we actually select the sites. But of course, at the end of the day, uh, there are uh, objectives in as far as uh, co joint and combined forces are concerned. Definitely North and uh, Westcom are actually our priorities right now. So we try as much to focus our activities or our efforts on those uh, priority areas. So. The, the main echelon that we support as First Civil Affairs Group is first uh, Marine Expeditionary Force. So one map that is the JTF now and Lieutenant General Cedarholm. And so we support them year round. We're actually located right next door. So it's a, it's a very nice physical location um, when we're there back at Camp Pendleton and we support them throughout the year. So we will be here in the Philippines through other exercises that um, may be located in different areas, but uh, with uh, Masa and Dying Shield, we'll support those efforts. And quite frankly, we are trying to posture as a civil affairs group to support OneMeth um, and the Philippines throughout the year in a more consistent and persistent way so that certainly Balagatan is a, is a large tier one exercise, but there are things that we could do to enhance this partnership and development throughout the year, and that's what we're working on with OneMath to support, a way that we can do this um, and, and promote this goodness all throughout the year. Yeah, and I think uh, that's true for all other activities here in the Philippines. Uh, almost always it's supported by civil affairs, not necessarily from the Marines alone, my favorite service ah, shout out. but definitely uh, the army is doing uh, a lot as well so uh, we've gotten support for pacific partnership and uh, we've gotten support for all our activities here at uh, oj7 from civil affairs so uh, our relationship with uh, civil affairs both uh, of course from the marines and the army has been going on for a long time and of course we're very happy with uh, how they have su they have support us supported us uh, over over the years, so yeah. I would say that um, civil affairs work is very personality driven because it deals with people which are the most complex of of all um, potential uh, working environments. When when you're dealing when you're dealing with people, um, there there is no there is no dearth, there is no uh, limitation to the problems that might arise, and so it's very complex when you're working with the human domain. Mm -hmm. But as long as you care, we can build capability. Mm -hmm. When you're talking about a wide swath that we are talking about in education, agriculture, security, um, governance, um, you're not gonna find someone who's expert in all of these areas. What you're looking for somebody who can work in the human dimension, that can work well with people, and who can uh, find a problem that needs to be solved for the commander. Anyone in any MOS that's able to do that and cares about doing it well can join civil affairs. Well, civil affairs is all about, just like what the colonel said, it's all about people. So one thing I can uh, maybe offer to a civil affairs practitioner or somebody who would like to join civil affairs is you have to be patient. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah, you have to be patient. You have to be flexible and you have to be persistent as well. So getting that people-to-people -people connection, making sure that you build on the relationship, no matter how hard it is on the ground, especially when dealing with the civilian agencies or the community at large, it's, you, should put, you should have patience, flexibility, and of course, patience, uh, persistence. So I think that's uh, one of the keys one of my takeaways as a CMO in the CMO field, so yeah. yeah. I think what, what the biggest takeaway is that we are there to solve problems for the command. Mm -hmm. We do not do CA, CA civil affairs or civil military operations in a vacuum. Mm -hmm. It is in order to support the, the national government and, and then the national military command um, to help resolve problems, reduce mm -hmm. friction, and help those missions that they have identified at higher levels be accomplished. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Um, so these things are all nested into a higher level order of, yeah. of governance yeah. and military leadership. 